We turn now to a forgotten Chinese exodus brought to life by a Bay Area author. Helen Zia is a longtime activist on human rights and LGBTQ issues. She's also a former executive editor of the feminist publication Miss Magazine. Zia's new book, Last Boat Out of Shanghai, is about the massive migration of Chinese who escaped China's communist revolution and what they share with today's refugees. Helen Zia joins me now in the studio, and it's good to have you here, Helen. Hi, thanks for having me here, Tui. Well, your book is framed around four exiles whose stories represent the experience of those who fled Mao's communist revolution. Can you take us back to 1949? What was the scene like when the People's Liberation Army marched into Shanghai? Well, this is a generation that lived through starting uh, World War II, the occupation by uh, Japan. It had been a very brutal time, the collapse of the old regime. And so this was a society, a society in chaos and had been for a very long time. And so when it was very clear that the Red Army of Chairman Mao was going to be marching into Shanghai, um, really all hell broke loose. And it, it had been building for some time because it was clear that, uh, you know, the, the society was going to collapse. And Shanghai was viewed as a capitalist place. A lot of um, the more elite Chinese Absolutely. lived in Shanghai, and they all feared persecution. Many did. It, it was a, a, a city like New York City. It was one of the uh, top five cities in population in the whole world, and it was China's largest and most cosmopolitan. The and Pearl of the Western. Orient. Right. Yeah. So at the time that the Red Army was approaching, people were, were so afraid that they were holding on to the sides of trains uh, and climbing on the roofs, going, you know, packed mm -hmm. like sardines or on boats that were so heavy they were sinking. And it, it, panic had broken loose. And, and that's why I called it the last boat out of Shanghai, because everybody who fled thought that they were on the very last boat. Mm -hmm the very last train or last plane. You spent 12 years working on this book, did more than 100 interviews. Why was it so important for you to tell this story? Well, for me, it was um, a story. I grew up with a family. My mother had been part of this, and all I knew about her life at this time was that she was on the last boat. And when I would ask her about that as a child, she would always say, that was wartime. It was a bad memory. I don't want to talk about it. And it wasn't until I was, you know, until she was in her 70s that finally I said one day, Mom, it's too bad you're not, you don't remember anything. She says, no, I remember everything. And if you want to know, I'll tell you. Well, that was when her story became very clear and uh, to me. And then I began to realize that every family who left at this time said that they were on the last boat. Friends of mine would say, oh, yeah, my father was on the last boat. And I realized that, like me, nobody had heard this story. Um, and it wasn't that long ago that it happened. And it's a whole different slice of Asian America, of the Chinese American experience. Yeah. And your book is coming out at a time when we're hearing a lot about the exodus of refugees from different parts of the world. What are the similarities that you see between what you've written about and what we're hearing and seeing today? Oh, the, the similarities, the parallels, and the lessons to learn are, are, are huge. I mean, and that's the point of telling these stories and learning from history. I mean, first of all, one of the things that gets said about refugees of any time is that they are pouring into our borders, that it's, it's just, you know, um, uh, they've decided on a lark to come here, like the thousands of refugees who m walked a thousand miles. But in fact, the refugees out of Shanghai they spent years debating, um, should I leave? Should I stay? Would it be, uh, how would we live? But how can we stay? What if we die leaving? What if we die staying? I mean, this was a daily debate in Shanghai for so many families every day. And I think that's what these refugees and migrants today, every one of them, before they decide to get on a rubber raft, you know, to leave Africa or to march a, a yeah. thousand miles. That's what they decide. And, and what happens after they arrive in their new country? Because you make the point that the refugees are often the kinds of people you want in a country. Oh, absolutely. And that's one of the big lies that's being said about these migrants and refugees that are trying to get in here. These are people who are risking everything for the possibility of, of living free or that their children can live free 
and survive childhood. And so these are the kind of people who were, um, many were pillars of their communities, and that's why they are most at risk, staying where they are. And so these are the kind of people who will be the most contributing people to our society, and, and we should welcome them. You're also a longtime activist on women's issues, the executive, the former executive editor of Miss Magazine, which was founded by Gloria Steinem. So I wanted to ask you about the Me Too movement. There's been quite a bit of backlash. Some men now saying they're afraid to mentor women or they're afraid to be in a business meeting alone with them. What do you make of all that? Right now we're in a society um, where people are being told to be afraid of everything, to be afraid of, of men, women, immigrants, um, our neighbors, anybody who's different, we should be afraid, when in fact, we should be trying to value each other. We should be talking about decency. We should move the dial to say, what can we value in each other that's, um, that makes us all grow together? That we can be a one nation, like, um, like a movement in, in, in Oakland's Chinatown is happening right now, of immigrants saying, we are one nation, AAPI. We Asian come Pacific together. Islander. Right, exactly. and that. Instead of demonizing each other, demonizing women, demonizing men, let's see the humanity in each other and what we can bring together as one nation stronger. All right. Well, Helen Zia, pleasure to have you here. Your new book, Last Boat Out of Shanghai, uh, comes out January 22nd. Thank you. Thank you, Twee. And that will do it for us. As always, you can find more of our coverage at kqed.org newsroom. I'm Twee Vu. Thank you for joining us.